Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Behold, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club for that Second Swing. And we're outside today, and it's very, very windy out here, Thomas. And so we thought the windy conditions, uh, we'll take advantage of it, and we'll kind of show the impact that wind can have on a golf shot. So the nice thing with TrackMan, we got that normalization button, which can really uh, dial in, you know, the numbers for us on, you know, a shot with the wind impacting it and without. So Thomas, you're a competitor. You're a recent back-to-back -back winner now, the Minnesota PGA Assistance Match Play Champion, back-to-back -back years. Um, so clearly you're familiar with competing and playing in the wind. Uh, and of course in the Midwest, it's a pretty common thing. So in your experience, you know, this is a steady wind today, about 20 miles an hour, gusting to 30, potentially more than that. What would a wind like this mean for you hitting into the wind? That's what the wind is right into our face today. What would this wind mean to you on say, you know, 150 yard shot or any yarder is really, how many clubs up are you taking? So it depends on the change in trajectory. If I was to still hit a full swing into the wind from yeah. 150 yards, the ball may go 20 or 30 yards shorter. But I may expect if I was gonna normally hit my nine iron or pitching wedge, or I might have to hit a seven or eight iron. Yeah. But what I like to do instead is I like to choke down on the club a little bit and flight it a little bit lower. Now as we're gonna test today, we're gonna just test a normal stock swing into the wind. Maybe we'll try a little flight it down shot here at the end, just to see how, how much this wind really does influence the golf ball, if you just hit a normal stock swing with wind and without wind. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to be using your stock golf clubs, your gamer and your uh, gamer golf ball as well. So it's going to be sort of as it would be on the golf course out here. So uh, I'm excited to find this out because I think we're all familiar with playing in the wind and how kind of annoying it can be sometimes. Uh, but it does bring an extra element of strategy into play here. And like you said, sometimes you can fight it down. Sometimes you just want to club up three or four times. Uh, maybe that's the difference that, that, that it can make. But we're going to see today how much you know yardage is lost if that changes the spin if it changes the height what all plays into it so i'm excited because this is going to be a learning experience for me yeah so we're going to do this with the pitching wedge seven iron four iron and driver so we'll hit two or three with each one okay. on with, with with the uh normalization button on and off and just kind of see what happens yeah i'm excited let's do it let's do it well so thomas we'll hit the shots here and we'll kind of look at the numbers with the normalization button on and then off, and I'm assuming we're going to see a pretty big difference out here. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be kind of fun to see with the normalization button on, and then all of a sudden just flip that switch and see what actually happens to the actual <laughs> distance here. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Okay. So first of all, the, the dispersion without the without the wind is, is pretty darn solid. It's a tiny it's a little circle there. At 136 was that one. Yeah. Without the wind now, <laughs> the total distance of this uh, this second one here, 95.2 yards. Flushed it. Uh, 100 carry. So thing would it's it's telling us that it, it took jumped 30 backwards yards, 35 yards. Five yards when it landed. Carried yeah. 100 yards. Total 95. So. Uh, there we go. I mean, those are two stock swings. We saw one was a little bit spinnier than the other, and that's only about, I actually want to see the difference in spin from the two shots. So 300 RPM. So one was uh, 10,069, one was 10,321, that second one. And that 300 RPM difference in spin, that thing went way in the air, and it dropped 20 yards of spin into the wind. Yeah, that's why it just shows the importance of lighting the ball under the wind and know that you're going to keep it in a, in a yeah. trajectory that you know you can control the ball. Well, we already saw some big differences. Now let's try the seven iron. Sounds good. I don't need to see another pitching wedge that goes 95 yards. <laughs> Flush? It was a little heavy. Not bad. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, the carry there, 171.4, total 178.8. Okay. Um, and then uh, it actually, now I will, I, I think that probably lowered the spin a little bit, right? Yep. And so it did penetrate through the wind a little bit better. So 156.9 carry, 160.8 total okay. with that. So um, let's get one more good swing. 
Yeah, well, let's get one more here at the seven iron. That'd be close. Yeah. Yeah, 174.6 carry, 183.7 total. It's a pretty solid dispersion out there, three seven iron shots. And then uh, that last one, when you factor in the win without the normalization button, 147.1 carry, 149.2 total. So, I mean, right there, you're, you know, it's probably what, 30 to yeah, about 30 yards of uh, distance that's lost because of this pretty consistent 20 mile an hour win and it's even kind of dropped a little bit sometimes out here so um i mean this is it's a big deal the fact it's a huge this difference win. yeah it's a real big difference uh, so so thomas let's say you do have 175 yards you know with this wind can't hit a seven iron probably what are you going to do to hit that shot now with a 20 mile an hour wind into your face yeah what i would actually probably do is i'd maybe grab the six iron or the five iron and I'd actually kind of just choke down on the club a little bit. So a little bit lower on the grip. Okay. A little bit closer to the bowl. And then I'd try and hit a shot here where I'm trying to kind of essentially hit a little punch shot, keep that ball low in, low in the wind. Okay. And keep the flight down so the wind doesn't really control it as much. Right. That way I'm still going to hit that same distance that I'm trying to hit it. Yeah. All right. Well, you going to maybe it? do that? Let's just do it right now. Let's see All it. Right. Let's no see it. No pressure. <laughs> So this is five iron then. So this is a, a 175 shot yep. into the wind with a five iron. Let's see what you can do here. Yep. That's a thing of beauty. All right, so turn that normalization button off. <laughs> yeah, so turn that off. And uh, we got 167 yards. That wasn't far off. So yep. it's pretty close, you know. Was and that carry or total? That was a total distance, 162 okay. carry. So okay. a little short maybe of that, but again, you know, the control of that flight, I mean, your, your height was only 75 feet in the air, so you definitely kept it lower than you would. Yep. Um, you know, what did you think of that shot there? It was pretty solid. I left the face slightly open, so maybe it didn't go quite as far. The wind kind of got a little bit. Yeah but I'd much rather hit it 167 when I'm trying to hit it 175 than hitting it 145 <laughs> when I'm trying to hit it. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah that's, you're, you're right. Cause even, I mean, look, I'm looking at the dispersion here with the normalization button off and it's definitely the farthest of, you know, compared to the seven iron. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, I guess <laughs> we were just talking about wind and how to play it and what, what matters, that matters, you know? Yeah. If you got a shot to play into the wind, it's gonna help your game. Free tip on how to hit a low, low bill shot. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Let's try now the four iron. All right. See how that uh, plays things out here. That was a really good swing. That yes, probably didn't affect it too much. Yeah, I mean, so then for what it's worth, uh, without wind, 214 carry, 233 total. So you really got a hold of that one. Yep. And I think you kept that spin down too, kind of moving it to the left a little bit there. So, yeah, I mean, I carried 189, total 194. So uh, it's still a lot. It's still, it's still you know, lot, we're talking yeah. 20, 25 yards minimum probably yep. with this uh, wind. But that was even like a kind of a. It had some draw, you pulled it a tad maybe. That's yep. very, very picky um, to keep that spin down. It still took off 20 plus yards there. Yeah, that was, I was, I was expecting maybe 10. I thought maybe that thing was yeah. gonna get pretty close. I hit that thing really soft. But That's, wind really influences how far the ball goes. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. Well, now, see, this is the next part that I'm really, really excited about is driver because you know, I, I, I like to try and hit the ball as far as I can and into the wind sometimes. It doesn't work very well, my yep. strategy of play. So this will be interesting here. Yeah, I'm going to expect it to go quite a lot shorter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Drifted a little right of the target, 
I think, yeah. but yeah, it, it was hit solid. Definitely smashed well. Your dis goodness, your dispersion with a button normalization button on is extremely <laughs> small. They both carried 289 and went, you know, 312 to 314 total. Yeah. Um, with the with the wind playing into the into the factor here, 236 carry 246 total. So, I mean, it's another element to consider uh, on the golf course. Clearly, this is we're making you know 50, 60 yards of difference here with the wind versus not kind of inserting the wind into this track man data. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I could really do to try and get the thing to go further. I can try and manipulate a lower ball flight of the driver. I think that'd be fun to try. See, that's what I was going to ask you now is, do you have a swing in the bag? I'm sure you do. Um, that you would, you know, into in competition, out playing, when you're into a wind like this, you can still take out the driver and get it out there. Maybe not 300, but yeah. get it out there further than 246. I believe I can get a driver through further than 246 with the normalization button off. Okay. If I keep the ball a little bit lower. I, yeah. think, I think I can do it. So, I, I, it's the same as kind of what, what I talked about with the irons. Just trying to manipulate that ball flight to fly a little bit lower, take off a little bit lower so the ball stays a little bit lower. Yeah. It may not carry quite as far, but it may chase out a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, let's let's see what you got here, Thomas. Okay. Can't hit any better than that. He says you can't hit any better than that. Yep. All right. So your club speed did dip a little. Uh, now, this is interesting. So normalization button on, we've got 253 carry, 264 total. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you take that, you put the win in consideration, we got 248 total, so it did jump over. Did it go further? Yeah. Uh, the carry was 233, so I mean, now that one thing to consider, that's for what it's worth, that's right on the center line. That is. Perfect, and the ball flight there is going to be way easier to control, and you're not going to be missing left or right nearly as much with something that goes, you know, less than 80 feet in the air versus your other tee shots that were going over 100 feet in the air. Exactly that. For me, when I'm playing in these elements, I got to make sure I can limit the damage. I'm just trying to grind myself away around the golf course. I'm trying to limit those bogeys or double bogeys by making a bad swing, and the wind really takes the ball that yeah. way, or. I can't get home on a, on a long par four, so I got to make sure just to limit the, the damage as much as I can by hitting that little low punch shot and driver there went dead straight for me, and that's right. that's all I'm asking. Yep. yep. Now, one thing I noticed is that we have a video out uh, on tee height, and I did see you teed it down a little bit lower there, and we talked about in the video of how that can kind of help with, you know, you're sort of forced to hit down on the ball a little bit more. Do you think your attack angle was a little bit lower without looking at the uh, numbers? Uh, I would expect it would be lower. I'm sure you can probably scroll over and right. take a look and see. Yeah. Usually no. when I tee the ball a little higher, it's going to force me to hang back on a little, little bit more and maybe not hit down on as much. Right. But yeah, back, I mean, was it right or was it? Uh, so if I look, Thomas, for the attack angle, right? The attack angle, it is the same uh, with the normalization button off, 3.2 on each. Now, okay. looking at the height, it did drop though. I mean, your your height 79.6 with the low T height, and uh, the low T height and the low launching shot. The driver with the other two shots, normal stock swing, 123 feet uh, for those. So I mean, you you dropped 50 feet of height essentially, uh, more controlled flight, and it went dead straight. I yeah. Mean, so keeping it low in the wind is is ideal. Low with no wind or downwind, it's not going to go as far. The, right. Yeah, so it's going to maybe go a little bit straighter, but when you got wind behind your back, tee it high, let it fly, you got wind into you, tee it low and control that trajectory. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This is, uh, I kind of want to give you this now because, I mean, the we have only a few shots on here, but there's a lot of information by just tapping that normalization button <laughs> that we can get from this. So I'm going to give this to you and let you break it down. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, you've got the data there. Uh, I was, I learned a lot. I, I didn't expect it to be that big of a difference in some of these shots, but what are you learning and uh, taking from what we found out today? Yeah, it was it was a huge difference. Uh, my stock numbers were pretty stock here today. Uh, pitching wedge was carrying 137 with the normalization button on. Yeah. Um, we switched that off. It goes to uh, 111. That's carry distance in total 108. Yeah. Total 137. So we. I lost 29 yards. Yeah. Big, big difference. One thing I really find interesting with the pitching wedge is the dispersion. 
you talked about how those two little blue dots are right, right. next to each other. Yeah. I only hit a couple shots, but they went 137 every single time. We, if we click on this normalization button off, that circle expands so oh, much. No. It goes from 100 to 125, essentially. So right. if I have water to carry, I'm in trouble. If I've got, I, I, I don't know what, what my carry distance is going to be if I hit a st right. normal stock shot. And I think so. the only difference, if I remember right, was just, I think, a few RPM of spin, you know, and then into the wind, you got a little bit extra spin. That thing kind of shot straight in the air, kind of ballooned on you, and that dropped that second shot of yours. And that's the reason it went, I think, you know, probably 20 yards shorter, I believe, than the other pitching wedge shot uh, with the button off. So like, uh, that's that's a huge difference and something that isn't necessarily predictable when you're hitting a shot, you know, the, the few RPMs of spin can make that much of a difference. Yeah, it, it would have, it definitely affects the, the distance for sure. Yeah. So, pitching wedge for sure, big difference because the ball was flying high yeah. with spin. That mm -hmm. spin with wind into it is just going to right. really affect it. You just right. don't know what it's gonna do. Right, now yeah. let's say, you know, I know we didn't necessarily have you do this during the video, but like, yeah, I'm sure you got a few different shots that you'd go to there, hitting it 140 yards into a 20 mile an hour wind. Yeah, I'm sure there's more than one in you have in your bag that you would trust versus a full swing. Cause for any golfer out there, this is true for a professional as good as Thomas or myself or anybody, hitting into the wind, a full swing with a lofted club is probably not going to do <laughs> what you want it to do, right? No, no, I would hit, <laughs> like a nine o'clock eight iron essentially okay. so i try and hit eight iron knockdown shot that would stay yeah. under the wind yeah be able to control it yeah. yeah okay so seven iron so going to seven iron 174 carry uh going 182 with the normalization button on 148 to 150. once again the dispersion circle got larger yeah. so that's that green circle on the left click that off gets larger and wider from left to right because yep. the wind is affecting the bull flight a lot. Yep. Um, it's a lot. That's that is what 25, 30 yards almost again. So yeah, really, really affected um, my distance essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think and then we had you hit the five iron there, which I think was a little short of maybe the the yards we were targeting. Yep. But if I remember right, it was right on the center line or near it. Um, so it was very controlled and at your target. Um, and like you said, it's better than being. 30 yards short, if you can control something and be eight or 10 yards short like you were there, um, that's a lot better than the alternative. And again, it's something that you can tr control and trust, which again, uh, emphasizes the need to be able to have something in the bag that can stay under the wind in conditions like this. Yeah, when I hit that five iron shot, it went, went 167 yeah. was, the, was the distance. When I hit, that's with you know, playing into the wind, trying yeah. to hit my knockdown shot. When I hit the um, seven iron normalization on, I'm 182. So I was off by about 10, 15 yards, yeah. but it was better than the 30 yards. You're right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, those other seven iron shots, when they <laughs> got up in that wind, you know, that's a big difference. That's a big difference for sure. Yep. Uh, four iron, once again, difference 211, carry going 228. Switch that normalization button off. 181 going 185. Yeah, so <laughs> about 30 yards every single time. Yeah, club essentially. Really big, big, big change. See, that's one yeah. thing too. I didn't really think about, but I guess it makes sense uh, to a degree. Is that it would be the same difference with each club because uh, you know they're going and they're supposed to go roughly the same height in the air yep. uh, throughout the bag. And so I guess from that perspective, it makes sense that the impact yardage-wise would be about the same. But as you mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, that doesn't mean the you know it's like a, it's not a two club win so to speak at the lower end of the bag and at the higher end of the bag just because of the way the gapping mm -hmm. works there. Yep. Uh, last one, driver. This was this is fun. I my the two those two drives I hit were pretty good. Yeah. Two, two eighty nine, two ninety carry. It's kind of what I've been working on all summer to try and get myself going three thirteen. Mm -hmm. I said it right off the bat. I I don't think I can hit those two any better. So I smoked right. those. Um, Bull speed at 168, I'm pushing that 170 mark. I'm very happy with that. But into the wind is trouble. Uh, 240 going 248. Yeah. So this I mean, is that's... the club that we noticed the big difference in distance. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's yeah. going to be staying in the air longer. I think you hit it a little bit higher, too. I think that was a little bit higher than maybe the, the normal numbers that I've, or at least numbers I've seen from you in the past. Um, yep. But I, I remember the dispersion on your normal, with the button on with those two drives was very small, if I remember correctly. 
And yeah. then to see it affected that much just with the wind uh, is pretty bananas because in a controlled environment, those two swings are per picture perfect, you know? Yeah, they one left of the center line and one just right of the center line and with the, with the normalization button uh, on, switch it to off, then we'll notice the one that crept a little right just kept creeping further to the right, yeah. so the dispersion got a little larger. Actually, dispersion was pretty good, even still with, it, with the yeah. button off. But then we came to that driver low shot that yeah. I hit. That thing is literally on the center line. Yeah. Literally on the center line. So the low driver into the end of the wind um, that I tried to hit when you, know, you asked me, hey, can you try and hit maybe something that you control a little yeah. bit better? What would you do into the wind? I can't. I can't complain with that. Fairways. <laughs> no. Fairways help me score lower into the day when I'm trying to when I'm hitting the wind. I want to minimal, minimalize. The big numbers. Right. That's the when you get in the wind like this, you're not trying as much to make birdies. It's more about all right, how can I make a par on this hole? Especially going into the wind like that, you're trying to make a par. And um, the first step there is putting it in the fairway. Whether it's 200 yards on the fairway, whether whether it's 300, <laughs> whether it's 150, doesn't matter what club it is um, or how far it is. Uh, you kind of just want to be in play there. So yep. that's you got that shot in your bag clearly. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Um, it's what I would have expected. I mean, it's maybe a little bit eye-opening to see how big of the difference was. I don't have a measurement for knowing what right. speed this wind is. I think you said you looked on the weather app. You said it was... Yeah, it was about a consistent wind of 20, and then we got gusts to 30 to 40 miles an hour today. <laughs> so, I mean, this is... Now, this is an outlier of a day. Pretty... I mean, there's we get days like this somewhat often, but, you know, most days you're not going to have this on the golf course. With that said, you know, a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind is going to affect it's in a similar affect way. It, yeah. so. Maybe not as much. There's definitely probably more of a... A ratio that you can figure out to how how many yards per per wind essentially. Right. I used to say about ten mile an hour is probably about ten yards. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Clearly, the the wind matters. So uh, something to consider uh, for golfers out there. Maybe not uh, a typical video that we usually do, comparing clubs, testing out the data and all that. But we figured with this wind today, we'll uh, break it down. And I was mostly just curious to see what happened. So apparently, you know, a twenty mile an hour wind with a gust like right now, about thirty to forty. Could be a 70 yard difference off the tee. So I uh, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thomas, thanks for breaking it down.